The first parameter that most science fiction authors and world builders define for their planet is usually its size, specifically its diameter. For some science fiction, such as Star Wars, the planet's diameter is often the only parameter they define, apparently feeling that a planet's size is its only important trait. I'm going to try not to read too much into that. Now that's not to deny that a planet's size is important to our understanding of it, but astrophysically it is the least important of the important parameters. Because on its own, the size tells you nothing useful about the planet, and it can cause major issues when a character inevitably steps foot on the planet and its surface gravity is defined. Most people don't realize that a planet's size and surface gravity, along with its mass and mean density, are all interconnected. If you define any two of these parameters, you have defined the other two, whether you realize it or not. Therefore, the trick to crafting realistic planets is in defining the right two parameters at the beginning, and the size and surface gravity are definitely not the right combination. Defining these first can very easily lead to unrealistic or even impossible values for the other two parameters. Which two parameters are best to use depends on what type of planet you're crafting. This video will focus solely on crafting terrestrial planets, so I will cover crafting Jovian planets, Hycean planets and ice planets in separate videos. Additionally, we will be splitting the terrestrial category into Earth-like terrestrials and sub-terrestrials. Earth-like terrestrials, as their name would suggest, are planets that have parameters roughly similar to those of Earth. Most planets from science fiction fall into this category, but even Venus from our own solar system classifies as such. The mass range of Earth-like terrestrials spans from around 1 times 10 to the 24 up to about 2 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. Subterrestrials are planetary bodies below this range, down to approximately 1 times 10 to the 21 kilograms. The solar system planets Mercury and Mars both fall into this category, as do the rocky moons Luna and Io. When crafting Earth-like terrestrials, the best parameters to define first are the surface gravity and mean density. This is because the surface gravity directly impacts your characters and how they interact with the planet, so it's definitely a property that you'll want to have control over. And the mean density is critical to the planet's realism, as it is an indication of what your planet is made of. Let me take a moment to explain that. First, when talking about the composition of a planetary body, planetary scientists tend to take all of the various elements that can make up a planet and slot them into four generalized categories, which we call materials. We have rocky materials, which comprise elements such as silicon, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, sodium, carbon, etc., all bound up with a lot of oxygen. You know, rocks. Then we have metallic materials which primarily refers to iron and nickel, as these are the most abundant metallic elements found in the cores of planetary bodies, but can also include the other metals as well. Then there are icy materials, which refers to water in both its solid icy state and its liquid state, as well as other ices such as methane ice, ammonia ice, and carbon dioxide ice. And finally, there are gaseous materials, which primarily refer to hydrogen and helium, but can sometimes refer to other gases such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide as well. Each of these materials has its own associated average density, and a planet's mean density is a reflection of the probable ratio of the materials that make it up. So for instance, the rocky materials that make up a planet's mantle and crust have an average density somewhere near 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter, but the metallic materials that make up its core have an average density near 8,000. So a rocky planet with a metallic core will have a mean density somewhere between these two values, depending on the ratio of rock to metal. The larger the metallic core, the higher the planet's mean density. And conversely, if a planet possesses a large amount of water or ices in its composition, or has a thick primordial atmosphere, both of which have very low average densities, then these will drive the planet's mean density lower. Now, this brief explanation of how mean density relates to a planet's internal structure is grossly oversimplified, but I hope it conveys the basic idea as to why mean density is so important when crafting planets. If your planet's mean density is not within the correct range, then the math describing it will disagree with your depiction of it, so we need to get it right. An Earth-like terrestrial planet should have a mean density between 4,000 and 6,000 kilograms per cubic meter. For reference, Earth has a mean density of 5,513, 
and Venus has a mean density of 5,243. For my planet, I'm going to place its mean density a bit lower than these values, making it equal to 5,068 kilograms per cubic meter. I'll add this to my SAP sheet, and then we can proceed to define our planet's surface gravity. The surface gravity of an Earth-like terrestrial typically ranges between 5 and 15 meters per square second, or approximately 0.5 to 1.5 Gs. Though most science fiction authors and world builders prefer to keep their planet's surface gravity close to Earth's 1G. This can be quite practical, especially when working in a visual medium, such as TV or movies, where characters have to be seen moving around on and interacting with the planet. However, it's a good idea to avoid setting your planet's surface gravity to precisely 1G, as this can come off as lazy and contrived. And it's not necessary. You can set your planet's surface gravity up to 5% higher or lower than Earth's without it having any noticeable effect on the way your characters move and interact with your planet. So that's what I'm going to do with my planet. I'm going to set its surface gravity equal to 9.6418 meters per square second, which I can then divide by Earth's 9.80665 meters per square second to get my surface gravity in Gs. This gives me a value of 0.9832 g. Now that we have defined the surface gravity and mean density for our Earth-like terrestrial planet, we can calculate its radius. To do this, we will be using this equation, which relates the radius of our planet to 3 times the surface gravity, divided by 4 pi times the mean density times the gravitational constant. Let's pull up our calculator and start off by opening a parenthesis, then type 3 times the surface gravity, which for me is 9.6418, then close the parentheses, press divide, open a new parentheses, and type 4 pi times the mean density, which for me is 5068, times, let's open another parentheses because the gravitational constant is a large number in scientific notation, and type 6.6743 times 10 to the power of negative 11, and then close both open parentheses. Your equation should look something like this. When we press equals, this gives us our planet's radius in meters. For me, that's 6,804,985 meters. So I'm going to record that to my SAP sheet. It's not necessary to get anything past the decimal point as representing a planet's radius in meters is already more than precise enough. We can then divide our planet's radius by Earth's volumetric radius of 6,371,000 meters to get our planet's size in Earth radii. Mine comes to 1.0681 Earth radii. And lastly, let's calculate the mass of our planet. To do this, we're going to use this equation, which equates the mass of our planet to its surface gravity multiplied by its radius squared and divided by the gravitational constant. So once again, we're going to start by opening parentheses and typing our planet's surface gravity. Then we'll press times and type in the planet's radius raised to the power of 2 before closing the parentheses. We will then press divide followed by another open parentheses and 6.6743 times 10 to the power of negative 11 and then close the parentheses. When done, your equation should look something like this. We press equals and this gives us the mass of our planet in kilograms. So my planet's mass is going to be 6.6897 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. After adding this to my SAP sheet, I'm going to divide my planet's mass by Earth's mass of 5.9721679 times 10 to the power of 24 to get my planet's mass in comparative units giving me 1.1201 Earth masses. And there we have it, a physically realistic and mathematically sound foundation of an Earth-like terrestrial planet. But what if you're wanting to craft a subterrestrial planet instead? You can use the same equations for these planets as well, but it's not ideal. Subterrestrial planets occur over a much larger mass and density range than Earth-like terrestrial planets, so it's better to instead define their mass and mean density. So let's start off by defining our planet's mass. As stated earlier, subterrestrial planets range in mass from about 1 times 10 to the 21st 
to 1 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, or roughly 0.002 to 0.17 Earth masses. If you're crafting a planet, then you can choose any mass within this range. But if you're crafting the major moon of a terrestrial planet or an asteroid belt dwarf planet, then you will likely want to choose a mass in the middle to low part of this range. I'm going to be making this into the rocky major moon for my Earth-like terrestrial planet. So I'm going to place its mass in the lower part of this range and set it to be 3.0552 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. I'll add that to my SAP sheet and then convert it to comparative units. Now, you can use Earth masses for your comparative units if you want, but this can get a bit tedious with planets on the low end of the mass range. But to do that, you would divide your planet's mass by Earth mass of 5.9721679 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. But alternatively, you can do as I'm going to do and use lunar masses instead. For that, I'm going to need to divide my moon's mass by Luna's mass of 7.3457892 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. That gives me a value of 0 0.4159 lunar masses. Next, we will define our planet's mean density. For subterrestrial planets, the range of possible mean densities spans from about 3,000 to 6,000 kilograms per cubic meter. In the case of planets and dwarf planets, the mean density tends to be highest near the star, where metallic materials are more abundant, and tapers off toward the outer edge of the habitable zone. However, in the case of terrestrial moons, these will tend to have low densities between 3,000 and 3,700 kilograms per cubic meter due to the way they form. For my moon, I'm going to set its mean density to 3,227 kilograms per cubic meter. With the mass and mean density of our planet defined, we can now calculate its radius. To do so, we can use this equation, which equates the cube of the planet's radius to 3 times its mass, divided by 4 pi times its mean density. So let's go to our calculator and open parentheses, type 3, multiply, open another parentheses, and enter in the mass of the planet. Mine is 3.0552 times 10 to the power of 22. Close both of the parentheses and divide. Then open a new parentheses and type 4 pi times our planet's mean density. Mine is 3,227. Then we close the parentheses and our equation should look something like this. We then press equals and get a really huge number, which is not the number that we actually need. Remember, this is the cube of the radius, so we want the cube root of this number. One way that we can get that is by raising this number to the power of 1 over 3. So let's press this button to add an exponent, and then open parentheses. 1 divided by 3, and close the parentheses. Then, when we press equals, we finally get our planet's volumetric radius. I'm then going to add this to my SAP sheet as 1 million 312,353 meters. Then I'm going to divide this by Luna's radius of 1,738,000 meters to get its size in lunar radii. If you're crafting a significantly more massive planet, then you'll want to use Earth radii instead. You can do that by dividing your planet's radius by Earth's volumetric radius of 6,371,000 meters. Lastly, we need to calculate our planet's surface gravity. To do that, we use this equation, which relates the surface gravity to the gravitational constant times the mass of the planet divided by the planet's radius squared. So we go back to our calculator and start by opening a parentheses, then entering the gravitational constant, 6.6743 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Then we close parentheses, multiply, and open a new parentheses. Now we enter our planet's mass. Close that parentheses and divide. Then we'll enter the radius of our planet and raise it to the power of 2. Your equation should look something like this. We then press equals and we get our planet's surface gravity in meters per square second. I can then record it to my SAP sheet as 1.1839 and then divide the number by Earth's surface gravity of 9.80665 meters per square second to convert it to g's. 
Mine comes out to approximately 0.1207 Gs. There we have it, a physically realistic and mathematically sound small planet, dwarf planet, or major moon. Before I end this video, there is one more parameter that we can calculate for our planet. It's escape velocity. Unlike the previous four parameters that we've defined, which were critical for a realistic planet, the escape velocity is optional. But it is useful if you want to know how fast a spaceship would need to fly to get off your planet's surface. To calculate the escape velocity, we will use this equation, which equates the square of the velocity to two times the gravitational constant, times the mass of the planet, divided by the planet's radius. We start by opening a parenthesis and typing 2, multiplied by, open another parenthesis for the gravitational constant, and enter 6.6743 times 10 to the negative 11. Close the parentheses, multiply, and open another parentheses for the planet's mass. After putting that in, close the parentheses and divide by the planet's radius. Now we can press equals, which will give us the square of our planet's escape velocity, to which we will need to raise it to the power of 1 over 2 to get its square root. This gives me a value for my escape velocity of 11,455.3 meters per second. That covers the critical geophysical parameters for a terrestrial planet, but there are still many more parameters that we can define for our alien world. But even if you want to stop here, your planet is already more realistic than 90% of the planets that appear in science fiction. So congratulations. That said, I hope you don't stop here and that I will see you in my next video.